Hi everyone, Leticia here again. Welcome back to my channel, Made with Love by Glamour, where everything here is made with love. Today's tutorial is going to be what I call my Daisy book cover. And I had never made a book cover before, but I came up with this idea because I was having a ladies Debbie McCumber Books and Brunch Tea Party. It was gonna be a lot of fun, and it was a lot of fun. Um, I told everyone to wear big sun hats so we could all feel like like, um, I don't know, English ladies. <laughs> and we had little finger foods and it was so much fun. My husband was the butler. Our last name is Wilson, so my, my, my husband was the butler. And I told everyone, um, he dressed up in black and he had, the, he had the whole, you know, dish towel or whatever you have there. And he's walking around with all, with all black, very serious buttoned up shirt. And I said, anyone if anyone I said not anyone everyone if anyone needs anything just very nicely say Wilson I need this Wilson I need that and I didn't think anybody really would do that but they did they had my poor husband running around like a chicken with his head cut off <laughs> so we had a little bell also where they could ring in case they needed something I'm my husband was such a trooper for putting up with 14 ladies in the house <laughs> Um, so anyway, this is what I came up with. Daisy book cover and it has an attached bookmarker because I don't know if you're anything like me, but I tend to forget where I leave my bookmarks. <laughs> I don't always leave them in my book. I, t I end up putting it in and going somewhere else with my book to read and then I'll uh, put it down there and then I'll change spots and I'll go read somewhere else. and hour or two later I'm looking everywhere for my bookmarker and I can't find it so that's why I came up with this solution <laughs> for my own problem my own forgetfulness I don't like to earmark my pages because I like to keep my books in mint condition so that's why I came up with this not just a book cover but a book cover with the bookmark <laughs> so anyway I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's not with a book when it doesn't have a book in it okay. Very simple. So this is what we'll be making today. And what I used was turquoise red heart super saver yarn. Um, Cause I wanted it um, to be a sturdy book cover. Um, and we'll also be using an H crochet hook. You'll need a tapestry or a yarn needle and also a pair of scissors. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you have fun, you know, making this book cover. And if you do, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you enjoy this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe um, because then you'll be alerted about all my other videos coming up. So I've got some ideas brewing around in my head for my next tutorials that I think everyone will enjoy. So don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to thumbs up my video and have fun making your book covers. Okay, bye-bye. So before we get started with our book cover today, I just wanted to share a little bit of information about me. Um, not only do I like crafts like crocheting and knitting and sewing and, you know, drawing and painting, but I also used to be a nail technician when I lived down in Texas. Um, so yeah, I'm a licensed nail technician down there. Up here in Washington State, I... I was doing photography, wedding, and portraits, and now I mostly just like to crochet and sell my stuff on my website and on Etsy and stuff. Um, but what I thought would be kind of fun, since you'll be looking at my hands a lot, is um, maybe each time that I make a video, at the beginning I can let you know the name of the color of polish that I'm wearing. Today I'm obviously just wearing white, but it has a name too. <laughs> Normally I wear a French tip color I, I paint I polish my nails with a French manicure but um, my nails are really short right now so I've just I just use solid colors when my nails are short but anyway when I used to be a nail technician in Texas I had a gentleman customer that used to come in weekly and get his nails you know get a manicure get them buffed and everything and he would bring in his own top coat and base coat because he liked his nails shiny um, and he would ask me to use that um, base coat and top coat and I asked him I said sure but I, I said I said what's what's so special about this one he says oh you'll you'll if you buy some you'll love it the polish stays on for like six or seven days I said really so I put it on him and the next day I went out and bought some at Sally's and uh, it's he's right it lasts you know your polish lasts for about a week 
Um, so the polish, the base coat is called Rock Heart, and you can buy it at Sally's. It's about six or seven dollars, so it's a little pricier than most base coats, but it's still doable. And the color that I'm wearing today, the brand is Sinful Colors, and the name of it is Snow Me White. <laughs> You know, a funny little story, um, my daughter Finesse, she's 22 years old, she has a bunch of nail polishes, so I guess she gets it from mama. <laughs> but a funny story is that she will not buy a nail polish if it doesn't have a name at the bottom of it. If it just has a number, she won't even buy it. And I said, why? She goes, I just have to know what it's called. I said, well, it's called 101. She goes, no, it has to have a name. I just want to know what, what I'm wearing. I, I want a cute name to it. So I just think that's kind of cute that she, uh, she won't even buy a polish if it doesn't have a name. <laughs> so that one is Snow Me White. And they also sell the, the top coat at Sally's. It's the Rock Top Coat. And it, too, is about 6 or $7. So I just wanted to, I just thought it'd be kind of fun that if I'm wearing a new color, I'll share that with you at the top of the video and let you know, just in case I happen to be wearing a cool color that day, you'll know what it is and where to get it. So anyway, let's get started with our book cover tutorial. So what we'll be needing, of course, is the yarn that I showed you. Red Heart Super Saver is what I use because I like the uh, I like the book covers to be kind of sturdy because they get a lot of use. I, I do a lot of reading, so I want my book covers to be really sturdy. So with this yarn, it actually comes out pretty, you know, the book cover comes out pretty thick. <clears throat> You'll also be needing an H hook. And I'm actually pretty excited about these hooks. Um, it's got a nice little um, rubbery grip and I know that everyone has seen these before I've seen them at Michaels and Joann's and stuff but they never had them at Walmart well now they carry them at Walmart they carry this there and it's a few dollars cheaper than it is at, at Joann's so you'll be needing your H hook you'll be needing a yarn or a tapestry needle and I use a yarn threader or whatever because I my eyesight's getting pretty bad so I use that <laughs> And you'll need a pair of scissors, mine are pink because it's my favorite color. <laughs> and I have a row counter and it too is pink. Um, so you can have your row counter because if not, you'll end up having to go back and recount and it, it takes, it's just kind of tedious to have to go back and count your rows. So I got myself a, a row counter and I use it a lot. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's get our yarn and our hook. And normally when you crochet, you have a, uh, a small tail, you know, and then you make your slip knot. Well, I'm gonna suggest that you leave a 24 inch tail because we're going to use that later on to actually sew our book cover um, flaps together and stuff and then we'll also do that at the end when we're all done with our book cover rows We'll also leave another 24 inches um, On that side to, to sew that in together. Let me get my yarn. I think my camera is sitting on it Sorry <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Don't forget leave um, leave about a 24 inch tail You don't have to but if you don't, then you'll have to, uh, you'll finish the book cover and you'll, you know, you'll cut the, the, the yarn and then you'll have to go back and, you know, just reinsert more yarn into the book cover to, to sew it together. And that's just another knot that you don't really, that I don't like to see. So anyway, I've got my 24 inches and I'm going to make my slip knot. And let me get my tail out of my way. <laughs> that sounded funny. <laughs> get my tail out of the way okay anyway back to crocheting all right so we're going to chain 26 one two three four five six seven eight wait that didn't go in eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 
18, 19, 20. Maybe I should slow down if there's any new crocheters out there so they know how to uh, do a chain. I'm just assuming that everybody knows how. But for a chain, you just you have your working yarn here, you have your hook, and you just wrap your hook around the yarn and bring it through that loop, and that's a chain. So that's 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Okay, so now we have 26 chains, and we're going to do single crochets. So a lot of times, people skip the first chain and go to the, the second chain from the hook, but I use all the all the stitches for my book covers. For everything else, I usually, let me take that out, I usually start like everybody else and go to the second stitch from the hook. But for my book covers, I like to use all of them. So for any of you who don't know how to do a single crochet, you see the chain has these V looking stitches and you can use the bottom and you can use or you can use the top and I use the top and you slip your needle into that top part of the V you grab the yarn you pull it through and now you have two loops you wrap the yarn around your hook again and you pull it through those two loops and that's your single crochet okay let's keep going we're gonna do that all the way down to the end of the row And also for any new crocheters, there are different ways to hold your crochet hook. I start off holding mine this way, um, but when my hand or my fingers get tired, I, I switch it and use and um, hold my crochet hook a different way just because I don't want to get carpal tunnel. So sometimes I'll switch it to this way and do that, do it this way for a couple of rows. Um, just to give my hands a break and a different type of movement so that I don't get carpal tunnel. But the way that I'm the most comfortable is this way. So this is what I usually start off with is this way. Maybe I'm going too fast, I don't know. Let me see. So here I put it, put my hook in here. There you go looking through the camera lens so it's a little difficult but we're doing it so we're just single crocheting all the way down to the end of the row and for all you seasoned crocheters you'll know what to do next but for the new crocheters I'll go all the way to the end of the row with you so that you'll know what to do at the end my tail my little Thing keeps curling up and getting in the camera, getting in the way. Okay, we're almost there. This is a really easy pattern that I came up with. Um, it's just basically going to be a long rectangle and you'll see how simple it is and yet it's very cute and I get a lot of compliments on the book covers and everyone's always asking me to um, to make a pattern um, and I don't actually work with patterns I usually just have ideas in my head and then I just try to figure out how to make it so that was our last stitch and now we're gonna chain one and turn our work around you know what I should have I should have clicked my thing because that was my first row and now this is my second row so now we're on our second row so if you have a clicker a row counter go ahead and and keep track because we're going to do this for 66 rows and like I said I don't skip this stitch I use it I don't skip and go to the second one I actually use this one so we're going to do single crochets down this row we're going to do some single crochets the whole time for the whole book cover that's all we're going to use oops I just knocked the camera out of the way so we chain 26 and we end up with 26 stitches because I use that first stitch I don't skip it so let's just continue doing this all the way down don't forget that when you get to the end of the row you just chain one because that's what you do for a single crochet you chain one and then you turn your work around 
and you either use that first stitch like I do or go to the second one. If you go to the second one, you'll only have 25 stitches all the way across. But if you want to do it like me, go into that first stitch when you turn your work around and you'll have 26 stitches. And we're going to do this for tw for 66 rows. So meet me back here when you've got when you've got 66 rows and we'll continue from there. All right, have fun making your book cover. Okay. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. See you back here in a minute. Okay, so now that we're at our 66th row, we're going to go ahead and tie, um, actually fasten off. So don't forget to leave about 24 inches of a tail on the end now. And so I went ahead and already cut mine at 24 inches and just fasten it off now. And you should end up with a big, long rectangle that has 66 rows on it. in it. Each of these ridges, I believe, are, are two rows. So what, I'm, so what I do, at least for my soft cover books, I don't know what size you have, but for my soft cover books, I usually count um, six of these ridges. One, two, three four, five, six, which is really 12 rows. And then I fold it there and I make sure to fold it even going down the stitch all the way to get to the other side. And what I'm going to suggest is maybe go and get some markers or some yarn. I'm going to use markers and I'm going to close it off right there so that I don't lose my spot when I go get ready to do the other side. So that's where we're going to be sewing. We're going to sew along there and I'm going to bring the yarn this way and go that way there. So go ahead and do that. Count six of these ridges, fold it over, make sure you've got it nice and straight or else your book cover will be crooked. Then go to the other side and do the same thing. Count your six row, your six um, little ridges here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Fold it there and Put a marker or tie a piece of yarn there. At least that's what I do so that I make sure that I don't go crooked. And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom here. So I'll go ahead and make sure that I'm lined up perfectly that line with this line so that I don't have a crooked bookmark or book cover. I have done that before. Um, and it's a little, there'll be a little off and it doesn't you can't really tell but I can tell and I'm kind of a perfectionist so this is what we're what we're going to end up with and then your book's going to go in here so let's go ahead and um, if you've done that already go ahead and thread your yarn through your yarn needle or tapestry needle whatever you call it and I'm going to use a needle threader because I'm not very good at seen anymore. I mean, I am, but I have to squint. Okay, so now that you've got this threaded, now you can go ahead and take your marker out because you're going to work on this end. And let's make sure it's lined up. Here's this end and the yarn's coming from there. So I'm going to go in to, um, here, let me zoom in a little bit. So since the yarn is coming from this end, I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the back end and sew it off. Uh oh, what did I do? Just oh, no problem. So just go ahead and now you've got it in place. And now I just basically do a whip stitch. I think that's what it's called. Um, so I just turned my work around because it's easier for me to do it. And I'm just going to go as close oops, as close to the edge as possible and then come around to this side and I just do a whip stitch. Do the same thing. You can go as close or as far away as you the stitches as you want but that's kind of why um, rather than you know in the beginning when we were doing our single crochets and I say that I use all the stitches. I don't skip a stitch. I like that. I like that little bump right here 
because that's where I know that's where I like to space my um, my little whip stitches at so that's just why I do it that way and for me it works out perfectly so I hope you had fun um, crocheting your book cover and as you can see it wasn't a hard project at all Paris what's wrong that's my uh, rescue Yorkie what's the matter Paris what do you hear okay so now we're at the end here and so I'm gonna go one more time right at the end and I'm gonna go in here like the half of the book cover and I'm gonna go in Let's make sure I don't get all tangled up and now we're at the top part we're at the top part so that we can get to this end to sew it so what I do is I hope I'm not moving too fast so the camera doesn't go off focus is I go in this stitch I come out through that one go in through this one go out and you're just basically weaving your yarn in and out that way you don't have a bunch of knots on the ends so I just like I said light bulb finally went off and uh, this is easier for me and it doesn't really show so I mean and if it does show it's kind of cute anyway so that's what I do so go ahead and do that on this end finish it off well let me do this whole side with you and then I'll let you do the other side by yourself and if you get stuck you can just rewind it and watch this side again Paris what's wrong it's okay what do you hear out there huh so let's just continue weaving in and out there we go we're all all the way at the end having a problem talking today okay so now you know why we left such a long tail so now that is sewn and we came across this way and now we're gonna go sew up this end and we'll be done with this end it's really super easy so um, since we're already inside the book cover I'm just gonna bring it to this side close it off and then I'm gonna go ahead and start closing it off hope I'm in the camera or in the shot okay and as you can see I'm trying to get as close to the edge as possible so that you leave as much room for your book as you can a little chihuahua hair the one thing I love about Yorkies is that their hair they don't shed I never knew that when I got them but that's that was definitely a bonus to learn that they don't shed I've got chihuahua hair all over the place usually so now go ahead and take your marker out and we're right here at the end I'm gonna flip it over see we barely don't even have that much yarn left so what I do is I like to make sure it's secure at the end so I just kind of go over it a couple times and then I bring it in through the inside and that way you don't they don't see the knot and I actually kind of weave it in and out without without letting it go through to the other side I kind of weave in weave it in and out to hide the thread go up and see what I'm doing is I'm going in this corner I'm going on the inside on the top flap and I just weave in my tail however many times you want oops that's gonna not work out because my tail is hold on yeah let me start over and we get that stitch out because I'm getting all tangled up. Okay, 
So now we can just go ahead and tie it off after we've weaved it in and we're happy with the amount of times that we've weaved it in. Hold on a second. Gonna make a little knot right there. And maybe a second one. And now go ahead and pull that knot down as far as you can. And now let me find my scissors. There they are. And now you can cut this down as low as you want. And you don't have to go that low, but you see, it's a good thing we left 24 inches of thread. Yes, we end up with a little extra, but you know, you never know. So I like, I'd rather have a little left over than to not have enough. So there's one end. There's one end of your book cover. So go ahead and do the other side now. Do this side and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, now I'm assuming that you've done both sides like I have. So there we go, we've got our um, book cover closed and that's what it looks like at this point. And at this point, if you like it nice and plain like that, well, you're done then. Just put your book in there and read. But I'm gonna go ahead and attach a book marker to mine. And so since these are our flaps and these ridges that I was telling you about count, there's, there should be eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So just go in the middle, two, three, four, and we're gonna put the marker about there. Make sure we have the right amount. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Just put a marker there. Sorry, reaching over like this so that you can remember where to put your mark, your bookmark. And so now what I did is I went ahead and switched to a smaller um, size hook to make the bookmarker so that the, because if I use the H, it's gonna be a little bit too thick, um, the bookmark will. What I do is I double up my yarn. Um, I went ahead and cut four yards of yarn. I know that sounds like a lot, but go ahead and cut four yards of yarn at least for this time, if you can find a better way to do it um, next time, you know, you can do like I did and trial and error, whatever works for you. And go ahead and um, thread your needle. Oops, actually, I don't want to bring it all the way to the end. I want to leave it, I want to leave the needle, I want to leave this much on there. And now, what I do is I put a little button on mine, but I go ahead and bring the yarn in. <clears throat> and I bring the button all the way to the center. So fold over your long four foot piece of yarn, fold it over, bring the ends together, and now make sure the button is at the center of the fold, right there. And so this is how I do it. You, If you can find a different way to do it, great. So I do a slip knot with this to secure the button in there. And then I just chain. Um, let me check my notes and see how many I usually chain. I think I'm gonna do either 26 or 35, I'm not sure. Let's see how much yarn we have at the end. So just go ahead and chain till you're at the end of your um, of your yarn, and then meet me back here. So right now, I believe I'm at 29, and I still have quite a bit of yarn left. But I'm going to go ahead and measure the bookmark to see where, if I left it at this length, where it would fall down on the book. See, I want to go a little bit longer. I want mine to hang down a little longer when the book's closed. So 30, I have 30 so far. I'm thinking maybe five more. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. And let me see where I like, if I like it there. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. That hangs down about how I like it. So now that we've got it at the length that you like your bookmark, um, go ahead and pull the yarn through, fasten it off, 
and we're going to be attaching it from the inside. Let's see if I can remember how I attached it though. <laughs> oh, I know what I did. I did it from the outside in. Doi. That makes more sense. I think last time I did it, I had a problem remembering how to do it too because it had been a while doing it. So I do it. I bring one of the strands from the outside of the book cover in through one of the stitches and then I tie it off right there. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I can't see what I'm doing because I'm looking through the camera. <laughs> okay, so then what I do is I just tie it off right there. Make yourself a little knot. Just a little simple square knot. However many times you feel comfortable with. And then what I do is at this point, just weave your tail in through here and then cut it off where you're comfortable. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I went ahead and weaved in my tails and I'm just gonna go ahead, I just went this far. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it there. And you're pretty much done. And when your book's in there, you'll never see that little string there. Um, so now I can take my marker off and the next thing that I would do would be to make my flower and I don't think I'm going to do that on this tutorial because it's getting kind of long but to make this flower it's very simple I, I might make another tutorial about the flower later but you can put anything on the book cover you can put a heart you can put a different kind of flower. If you put a rose or something, you can just go get a rose button instead and you, so that way they'll be matching. But <clears throat> if you want to make this flower, I let me see, I believe I, I chained um, in the yellow, I think I chained six and then I fastened it off with a slip knot. And then what I did is I chained one after I slip knotted it, I chained one and I made two single crochets into each one of the six stitches and so that gave me 12 and then for the flower for the petals part switch to white and um, go ahead and attach your white to the yellow and oh what I was going to say as well this is a, a good tip to tell you is I found this out too after doing two or three of them is when you is to leave a long tail either at the beginning or at the end with this yellow because um, what I was finding is I would cut it and then I would have to reattach it to sew it in so now what I do is I leave the yellow long and I and I end up I end up um, bringing the tail in from the bottom all the way up and so what I do is I sew the flower in place with the yellow tail going like this bringing it in putting it in, bringing it out, putting it in back and forth. And so that's how I have it sewn. See, you can see where I brought the tail in and out. And then I just went ahead and not, you know, knotted it off. You can see all the places where I went in and out to, to, to secure the flower. So anyway, so leave a long tail for that. I almost forgot to tell you that. And for the petal, what I did is I attached white yarn and I chained I believe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think eight or nine petals. And you can make it longer petals, shorter petals, however. I think I did seven or eight. So chain seven or eight, bring it down and single crochet into the next stitch. And so once you single crochet that petal into that stitch, chain another, um, you know, whatever amount you're using. I think I did, like I said, seven or eight. Chain your seven and eight or eight. Then bring it down and single crochet into the next stitch and just follow that all the way till you get to the end. And well, I sure do hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. Oh, I was going to show you. Here's another kind of a flower that I do. And I'm, I was thinking of maybe doing this on a book cover at a later date. And you can put it wherever. You can put it at the top, wherever. Um, I like it on the corner for some reason. So that's another kind of a flower. It's like a three... Well, this one is a two tier. I usually make three tiers of flowers, but this flower was getting really big. If I had made a third tier, it would have been huge. So anyway, this is another idea for a flower. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that as well. So look for my tutorials. If you want to wait to put a flower on till I make a tutorial or just go on YouTube and 
um, type in how to crochet a flower and pick the flower that you like from the um, channel that you like and just copy that and attach it to your book cover and you're done. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you, you like your book cover, don't forget to give my video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because if you subscribe, you'll uh, be alerted for my next videos and I've got some really cool ideas. So don't forget, subscribe and uh, don't forget to like the video. Okay, well, I will talk to y'all later. Thank you for visiting Made With Love by Glamour where everything is made with love. Bye.